Well, good morning. This is Russell Howard with the Richland Road Church of Christ to share with you good news to live by. As far as a few announcements today, would love to invite you to join us tonight for our study of Ruth on our Zoom Bible study. Later on today, you can, in the afternoon, can come and find exactly how to get hooked up with that on our Zoom Bible study, and we'd love to have you. We'll be looking at Ruth chapter 2 tonight. We're in the study of Ruth, so it'd be great if you can join us tonight. And then tomorrow night, for our Heroes of Faith, uh, it'll be my time to share a Bible study from Hebrews chapter 11, and verses 23 to verses 29. We'll be talking about the exciting story of Moses and then the story about his birth, his story about his leadership, the story of crossing about the Red Sea. I hope that you will be joining us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock as well. It is a delight to be with you every morning. Matt and I enjoy this opportunity to connect with you and to share with you some words of encouragement as we talk about good news to live by. In many ways, life on earth is like kind of like climbing a mountain of sorts. It, it's difficult at times, but it's also very delightful, and it's also very rewarding. And with steady, persistent effort, we get to a point where we see the top. Things just look awesome, and we're so excited about what we have accomplished. We can almost smell the victory, and we, we sense a flush of excitement. But then it happens completely out of nowhere, out of the blue. The unexpected knocks us down just before we may reach the top. Who hasn't done battle with criticism that lungs out at us like a hungry lion and tears us like a panther's claws? The ones that, that survive are the ones that prepare themselves for the battles. And the battles can come in so many different ways, so many different ways that they attack us. Jay Rademan is such a man. While hunting deer in the Taman Wildlife Area near Red Bluff in Northern California, Jay Rademan climbed to the ledge of a slope of a rocky gorge. And as he raised his head to look over the, the ledge above, he sensed movement at the right of his face. A coiled rattlesnake struck with lightning speed, just missing Radaman's right ear. The four-foot snake fangs got snagged in the, in the neck of Radaman's wool turtleneck sweater, and the force of the, of the strike caused it to t land on his left shoulder. It then coiled around his neck. He grabbed it behind the, the head with his left hand and could feel the warm venom running down the skin of his neck. The rattles making a brush, a, a furious racket. He fell backwards and slid headfirst down the steep slope through the brush and lava rocks and his rifle and binoculars bouncing beside him. As luck would have it, as he said in describing the incident to the Department of Fish and Game Warden, I ended up wedged between some rocks with my feet caught up hill and with my head I could barely move. He got his back hand on his rifle and used it to disengage the fangs from his sweater. But the snake had enough leverage to strike again. Here's what he said. He made about eight attempts and managed to hit me with my with my nose just below my eye about four times. I kept my face turned so he couldn't get a good angle with his fangs, but it was very close. This chap and I were eyeball to eyeball, and I found out that snakes don't blink. He had fangs like darning needles. I had to choke him to death. It was the only way out. I was afraid that with all the blood rushing to my head, I might pass out. When he tried to toss the dead snake aside, he said he couldn't do it. I had to pry my fingers from its neck. Well, you definitely would understand that. Rademan, 45, who worked for the Defense Department in California, estimates his encounter with the snake lasted 20 minutes. Warden Dave Smith says of the meeting, Rademan, he walked toward me holding this string of rattles and said with a sort of grin on his face, 
I'd like to register a complaint about the wildlife here. How much is life much like what Radaman encountered with that snake that day? At the most unexpected moments, life pounces on us. With treacherous strength, its snake-like assaults have a way of knocking us off balance as they wrap themselves around us. Exposed and vulnerable, we can easily succumb to those attacks. They come in the form of physical pain, emotional trauma, marriage conflict, temptation, financial setbacks, attack after attack after attack after attack. And exactly what is the target of the attack? It's our heart. That's what the Bible calls it. It's the inner self. Deep down where hope and is born, where decisions are made, where commitments are determined, where character is formed, it's the heart. The Bible says of the heart, God has set eternity in the heart of men. Jeremiah 29, 31 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your heart. Romans 10, 10 says, With your heart you believe and are justified. Psalms 119, verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart. However, if our heart is poisoned, if the attacks are successful, we can become like David, in which we cherish sin in our heart. It can cause us to have a divided heart. It can cause us to have develop a hard heart, or worse yet, a seared heart, where we have no feelings, no desire to please God, no desire to live and serve Him. It reminds me of the words in, in Ecclesiastes when he talks about those of, of the world. He, he would say these words, and that you have that. They have darkened their understanding, separated from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality, so to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. See, that's what can happen if our heart is, is attacked and if it's poisoned. That's why we must take heed to the words of Solomon, in Proverbs chapter 4 and verses 20 to 23. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healthy to a man's whole body. Above all, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. An unguarded heart spells disaster. A well-guarded heart means survival. If you hope to survive the treacherous attacks by Satan and the world, you got to guard your heart. Reminds me of the words of Paul in Colossians chapter 3. Since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. I appreciate you listening today. This is Russell Howard with the Richland Church of Christ. We always encourage you to visit our, our website here, also our Facebook page, and then also our YouTube. Go to YouTube, Richland Road Church of Christ. You can get our services from this past Sunday and all of our other talks that we present weekly and daily. Look forward to having you tonight at, at our 7 o'clock in our Bible study, and then tomorrow night uh, on live, uh, uh, Facebook Live, on as we do our study of Hebrews. And then we encourage you every morning to listen to Good News to Live By. Thank you for listening today. May God bless you, and may you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.